for our transgressions. He was pierced for our iniquities. The rising of the sun to its setting. In the name of the Lord, peace be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
second reading is from the Gospel according to St. Mark, the 15th chapter. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole battalion. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. And they were striking his head with a reed, and spitting on him, and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put on his own clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We have an advocate for the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered from sins and evil. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered from sins and evil. We have an advocate for the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered from sins and evil. He writes. scribes and the religious folks of the time. 
their thoughts and their ideas were mostly devoted to you do good works, you follow the law, and you're in a good position with God. And Jesus came and literally upended and overturned all of that preaching and all of that teaching. It's not about what you're doing, what you can do, but you can do it. This is why the Christ has come. This is why Jesus has taken on human flesh. This is why Jesus comes and why you have that kind of preaching and teaching about him and not about us. Preaching and teaching not another version of Moses and the Ten Commandments, but about the work of the Messiah and the work of Christ. It's preaching and teaching that is the issue, and that's the reason why he was arrested. Well, when he's arrested, he's arrested, and they accuse him of being a blasphemer. We know that. He's condemned for it, condemned to death. But as you recall from the reading, from the, the Passion reading, they don't have the ability, they don't have the means for putting him to death, and so they go to Pilate. And the reason that they give, the reason that they submit as to why Jesus should be executed is because he is a king. It's a political crime. They don't believe that Jesus is their king, but he most certainly is. They reject him. He was sent to them. They reject him. That's true. But in spite of their rejection, in spite of their mistreatment, Jesus is the one who is the king. He is the son of David. He is the one that was forecasted in the scriptures. He is their king. And even when he goes to Pilate, and he's condemned then as a terrorist, as a revolutionary. He is one who is worthy of being crucified. And then he's handed over to these soldiers. And this is part of the reading tonight. And it's a short reading. Where they receive him, they know what the charges are, and they begin to mock him, and to spit on him, and to beat him. And what do they say? Hail, King of the Jews. But they're mistaken. He's not Hail, King of the Jews. It's Hail, King, because he's their king too. He's their king in this way. When it comes to kings, it comes to kings and how they thought about kings. Kings had one real job more important than anything else. And the job was this. You have to defend the king. You have to be out in front. You have to lead the troops. You have to be willing to put your body on the line for them and for their safety. You have to be willing to shed your own blood for your own people because after all, that's why you're the king. It's not just about sitting in the throne. It's not just about having people serve you. It's about serving the people that you are the king over. With your own body, with your own flesh, with your own blood, with everything that you have to protect them and defend them. Jesus is their king. The Jews reject him. The Gentiles mock him. But nevertheless, this Jesus who was sent to us, this Jesus the son of God, this Jesus the son of David, he is the king. And then there's this, and this comes from the reading from Hebrews. The prophet who was sent to us, the word for preaching and teaching, he's rejected. The king who was sent to us, who comes to defend us, defend us against sin, death, and the devil, he's rejected. Then you have this last piece in Hebrews, and this piece is this. He's the priest. Now, he's not the priest as far as the Jews are concerned, because he's not from the tribe of Levi. He's not of a descendant of Aaron. But he is the priest, and he is the priest because of what he does. He is the priest because the priesthood he has is superior to that of Aaron and all the Levites. When it comes to Aaron and the Levites, what they were given is the offerings of the blood of bulls and goats and things of that sort. The Aaronites, the Levites, are given things to offer, and all they can do, and this is what's said for us in the book of Hebrews and even in the reading, all they can do is basically cover over sin, but never atone for, never forgive. It's only Jesus because of who he is. Because he is fully God. Because he is fully man. Because he does have something that he can offer, namely himself, to atone for the sins of the world. And because of who he is now, according to the divine nature, in terms of being the infinite God, he's always got enough of Jesus. He's always got enough righteousness. He's always got enough of himself to cover your sins, all of your sins, every one of your sins, forevermore. And so his sacrifice is the superior sacrifice. His priesthood is the superior priesthood. His is the one that when he offers his body and his blood for you and for us, it really does take away our sins. Not just covering and we have to go back later.
later, not just putting it to the side and then we have to go back later. Forevermore, because of the Christ, your sins have been taken away. Taken away from you entirely, God himself forgets them. So this is what the reflection of them. This is what we learned the passion of the Christ. We learned about this prophet who was sent to us that is rejected. We learned about this king who was sent to us who is rejected. We learn about this priest who, in his rejection, offers the sacrifice for us, namely himself. And what do we have now at the end of this? What can we say at the end of this? What we have is, is we have the revelation of who Christ is for us. We don't have to think about it. We don't have to be worried about it. No, God himself has revealed to us, himself to us. Christ himself has revealed himself to us. He is our prophet. He is our priest. He is our king. Things that he does for us have the eternal kind of benefit. We receive them now and forevermore. The things he does for us have the kind of permanent benefit. You have them and you have them forevermore. Nobody can take them away from you. Forgiveness, life, and salvation are yours forevermore. Nobody can take it away from you. And the reason we have this is because of the work of Christ. Because of the work of Jesus. The prophet who speaks to us king who defends us and preserves us from all enemies, sin, death, and the devil. And the priest who has offered the sacrifice for us that endures forevermore, that covers all sins, because of this prophet, this priest, this king, because of this Christ, because of this Jesus. You have forgiveness and life and salvation. You could never arrange it for yourself. Your parents couldn't do it for you. Nobody could do it for you. I couldn't do it for you. You couldn't do it for me. But because of what Jesus has done, we have it. We have it. And it's ours now, and it's ours forevermore. And so for this Jesus and all of his gifts, we offer our thanks. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
let us pray to the Lord. Lord, our God, and merciful. For the gift of divine peace and a pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel, and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have For all those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, for the widowed and the orphan, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have for the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church at the end of midweek Lenten services, and for the Holy Week ahead of us, that you would help us always see Christ, who is our Savior, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Christ, have mercy. Lord, Lord, let us pray. Merciful and everlasting God, you did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us all to bear our sin on the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him that we fear not the power of sin, death, and the devil. Through Saint Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously Son and the Holy Spirit, bless and 